With monarch butterfly populations struggling, there is a real need for conservation. And here with the dirt, the U of I extension, we've got Ryan Pankaw, the horticultural educator, joining me. Uh, you're going to have to teach me a whole lot because I know very little about monarchs or milkweed or any of this. But first of all, welcome. Sure, yeah, thanks for having me on, Tim. And one of my favorite topics to talk about is monarchs and the way we can kind of support them by planting milkweed. So I didn't know they were uh, their population was struggling. Yeah, for a lot of reasons. Uh, at a national level, monarch populations are really declining. So they, um, amazingly, they migrate from all parts of the U.S. down to Mexico each year and overwinter down there and come back. So, I mean, think of the mileage those insects travel. And they don't and feel like they fly very fast either, so that's a yeah. long way to go. <laughs> it takes them a while to get down there, for sure. And, and so just... All, in all the ways we as humans have impacted the environment, changed things, we've, we've reduced their habitat. And so what folks started to notice is down in Mexico, their populations are really plummeting where they overwinter at. And so um, it's caused a real awareness and need for conservation of monarchs. Um, monarchs seem to be the most popular butterfly, but maybe not the most common. Is that true? Uh, yeah, that's definitely true. There's probably other butterflies and moths that you see more often around your garden space. Uh, where monarchs are, I mean, thankfully, I think some of our conservation efforts are working, and we're starting to see, I'm starting to see more around my place, but I'm also starting to plant a lot of milkweeds to support them. But. Well, let's talk about that then. What are some things we can do to help support the population? We've mentioned milkweed several times. Apparently, that's one of the things that can help. Sure. Well, and, and milkweed have a unique relationship with monarchs because that is the only food that their caterpillars can feed on. So a monarch, an adult monarch ready to lay an egg, a female, is ready to lay her egg on a milkweed species. Now, there's a little over 20 native milkweed species in Illinois, so that's not just one plant, it's a Got genus it. of plants. Um, but then that little caterpillar, that's the only thing it can eat. So if we don't have milkweeds, we don't perpetuate that monarch population. Now, on the flip side of that, those adults have to eat something while they're here. So uh, milkweeds have flowers, but... Um, Monarchs also use flowers of many other plants to get, you know, as, a, as adults, to get their food source. So um, just planting a nice uh, garden of things that flower can actually be good support for monarchs. And that's something that we're seeing a real need for from here all the way down to Mexico is a lot of those flowering plants. When you say adults, you mean butterflies? Yeah, the butterfly version. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so all these things I'm assuming you can find at your local garden center, including the milkweed, and is it something that you grow from a seed? Or are you buying uh, a, a shrub? I don't even know how milkweed shows up. Well, uh, actually, it, it is not as easy to find as just going to your local garden center, and that's because um, it's a native plant that hasn't typically been in cultivation. It's not something you just typically see with all the other flowers we get. Um, so you almost have to... Like, I grow some myself from seed. Um, you can buy them at native plant sales. Um, you can get them from neighbors is another way you can dig and divide those plants and, and get some. So they're not as simple to find, but um, they're out in nature. There's a lot of places you can see them growing in the roadsides and other places, or in prairies is one of the spots where they grow. So. And there's more than just one type of milkweed, too, right? It's not Definitely. just, like, one plant. There's a lot of variety? Yeah, there's a lot of different varieties. but. Um, you know, gardeners have become more and more interested in planting these. So at my office, we're starting to get more and more questions about how you garden with both milkweeds. Where do I put these in the landscape? And I guess one of the things that came up that I want to talk about today is that there's other bugs that use it, milk, milkweed as well. And um, one of the really... Are these good bugs, bad bugs? Well, some are good, some are... Okay. Yeah, yeah, they... Uh, quite a few of them are native that I want to talk about okay. today. Just a couple that we get a lot of questions about. But one really neat and interesting thing about uh, monarchs, or about milkweeds, is that they have a, a natural protection in that they put a toxin into their... Uh, leaves and stems and all parts of the plant that make it actually toxic for a lot of other animals to eat. So monarchs are one particular um, animal that has a coevolutionary history with milkweed and has evolved the ability to digest that toxin and incorporate it into their body. So it's also protection for them. So the neat thing about these other insects, although some folks kind of think of them as pests because they're also eating your milkweed, they've also evolved that ability too and, and many are, are native. So to kind of run down that list, we've been showing yeah. a few pictures of some of these. Um, the milkweed bugs, there's two types of those, large and small milkweed bugs. And you probably saw one of the pictures roll across the camera here that was, um, you know, the kind of an orangish looking, almost beetle-like um, insect, but it's, it's technically a bug. That is a category of insects. Uh, but there's two types. Um, I've, I've sent pictures here of the large milkweed bug that really um, folks see it and it's alarming. You know, that's a picture of the nymphs kind of 
you know, huddled up on a pod there feeding, and there you can see the adults. Uh, not a big issue. They don't cause a lot of damage, but you notice them because they're bright orange. And so we get a lot of questions about those. Should I worry about these bugs? Well, native, not a big issue. Um, the next one that is, is another caterpillar that actually feeds on milkweed, and it's a caterpillar of the tussock moth. And so um, folks do notice that a lot of times because they feed in large groups. And you can see the, the kind of tufted, brightly colored caterpillars there. You can't miss those guys. And I will say that um, they do heavily feed on milkweed plants a lot, but they're native. So not something that we recommend necessarily controlling, um, but there's times that they can defoliate your plant and make it not look as good. Got it. Um, and so the last one I was going to talk about is oleander aphids, so a type of aphid that actually feeds on plants. Really noticeable because they're always up on the tips of the plant, kind of feeding up where you see them. That's where they like to be, but um, it seems like they almost multiply overnight and you have a giant population <laughs> kind of feeding on your milkweed. Um, and they, they're non-native. They're actually from the Mediterranean. They, they, they evolved with oleander, the plant that's native to there. Uh, so they're one that, you know, sometimes it's worth control. Um, Never would use an insecticide because that's going to hurt monarch caterpillars. Uh, one recommendation is just a stream of water kind of knocks them off. Still, you know, kind of a, a way you could inadvertently knock off a monarch caterpillar. So I kind of look around for that before I, for me, I just kind of hand pick them off carefully. And you can just kind of squish them okay. up on the stem and get them off of there. Um, but, you know, they, they can kind of make your plant not look as good by the end of the season if you don't do a little bit to control it. Uh, quickly, before we wrap up, you mentioned milkweed can be harmful to certain other animals, whatever. Uh, do you need to be careful where you plant it? Or is it uh, just sort of... No, uh, I mean, it, it's, you know, it basically deter... It, it tastes bad, probably, to a herbivore. It. It's not something where you like necessarily should worry about. Kind of thing. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It's, it basically tastes bad is what the toxin does. As usual, I have learned a lot. Thank you, Ryan. I appreciate it. And uh, hopefully you've learned a lot as well. If you want more details on how to uh, sort of perpetuate the monarch population in your backyard, you can go to our website. We'll connect you with Ryan and all the information he provided today at CILiving.tv.